lot has changed in the 30 years since the Battle of Endor. This video, I want to take a look at the biggest differences between the Empire's TIE Fighters and Pilots and the First Order's TIE Fighters and Pilots. It is pretty well known TIE Pilots of the long since dead Galactic Empire weren't treated that well. Their survival rate was dismal and they were simply considered a line in the military ledger. Under the First Order, where the TIE Fighter is a symbol of power and prestige, this would all change. Though the First Order's generation of TIE Fighters strongly resembled the TIEs of old, they have quite a few improvements. There are a few reasons for these improvements, advances in technology being the most obvious, but also not being the dominant galactic space force has greatly benefited this latest generation of TIE fighters and their pilots. First Order engineers have a much less bureaucratic regime that allows them greater freedom. In the Galactic Empire, technological advances and innovations were often held up by inner service fighting or Imperial War ministries. Something that was seen with the first Death Star, where deadlines were constantly missed until Tarkin came and straightened everything out. Without these structures getting in the way, the development of technology under the First Order had a much easier path to production. Another reason for the improvement of TIE Fighters is how the Empire versus the First Order viewed them. Where the Empire treated their TIE pilots as expendable, the First Order views them as critical military assets. This change in mindset from the Empire on how valuable TIE fighters and their pilots are brought about some really big changes, such as finally being given deflector shield technology, because shields are pretty useful in combat. Not only that, but rudimentary deflector shields have smoothed out their passage through atmospheres, granting the TIEs greater atmospheric control without needing streamlined modifications to the space frame. The First Order's TIE Fighters have some other highly valuable upgrades as well. They now have dark hulls that make it harder to target them with visual scanning. Advances in flight controls also make flying much easier. A sophisticated Torplex flight computer translates movements of the pilot's two control columns into micro-adjustments. Improved solar cells and higher capacity converters have also been implemented. Unfortunately, some things haven't changed, such as a standard TIE fighter lacking a hyperdrive, making them still suited for short-range combat missions. Under the First Order, there's also now an SF TIE fighter, or Special Forces variant that is equipped with a heavy weapons torrent for a tail gunner, enhanced shield projectors, and limited hyperdrive. Banks of high-yield deuterium cells provide additional power to the engines, weapons, or shield, and can be recharged from the SF TIE solar panels. They also have more room. Where a standard TIE fighter is a single-person fighter, the SF TIE fighters are designed for two people, though the pilot can fire all weapons without the need for a second person. All these improvements make the SF TIE Fighter suited for long-range operations, from reconnaissance to combat operations, away from a command ship or base. Downside to all this is the SF TIE Fighter needs twin ion reactors set on either side of the command pod, where a standard TIE Fighter only needs a single reactor aft of the pilot seat. The extra technology makes the SF TIE Fighter create more heat than the craft can dissipate, and is far heavier than the standard TIE. The heat problem has been solved by using an experimental ion flux cooling system. The weight problem has been solved by using a layer of alloy bracing to reinforce the pylons between the command pod and wings. The First Order also takes better care of their pilots. Their TIE pilots are given greater training and support on their missions. The pilots now undergo rigorous training similar to the constant and dehumanizing drilling that stormtrooper cadets go through. Their training starts at childhood, with most pilots growing up in the corridors of a Star Destroyer, and takes place in secret flight schools in space far from the areas explored by the New Republic. The First Order has strict standards for their pilots which include hand-eye coordination, visual acuity, and reflexes. Those that can't meet their high standards are transferred to other positions within the fleet. So thank you so much for watching, please like this video, subscribe, and come back for new Star Wars videos every week.